Since this morning, I'm so excited to be with you uh, this morning to share with you. I will be sharing with you from uh, one of my latest publication. Uh, it's actually on the subject of uh, enemy and problems and challenges uh, because uh, uh, I am a kind of uh, allergic, <laughs> so to say, to problems. I don't like problems. I don't like enemies, you know, and, you know, one of my earlier misunderstanding in faith, you know, when I got born again, was a popular scripture that says, I think it's First Corinthians chapter number 517, if any man be in Christ, is a new creation, all things are passed away. Everything becomes new. So I kind of misunderstand that from the onset, thinking, oh, yeah, I'm born again now. So all my problems are over and all my, you know, challenges in life is over. But over a period of time, uh, I, I learned, you know, the full or the real meaning of that. And, well, the, I was already in it, you know. So I have to face each day with challenges. Um, in, in, I start my reading uh, from the book of John, chapter number one, uh, about verse eleven and um, verse twelve. You know, uh, this particular scripture resonates with me because, as a student of the Bible, I used to wonder, you know, why would the, you know, the Pharisees uh, who were so righteous that Jesus commanded them that if our righteousness do not exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees, we might not even be able to enter into the kingdom. So that tells me that the Pharisees did have some level of righteousness and we had the Sadducees and all the, the key uh, sects and, and, and groupings of people of the, of the time that Jesus came in and the Pharisees were quite popular and and they, they they were Jews they had an expectation and they were supposed to understand the scriptures so when I I started reading the Bible and I read the book of John chapter number one in verse 11 it says he came to his own and his own received him not so that was a kind of uh, you know surprising that jesus came to his own people the people that were expecting the messiah and the people that were praying and anticipating the coming of the messiah and all of a sudden the messiah was here and they did not receive him and I've been wondering what kind of a people were these folks. They had expectation waiting for uh, hundreds of years like we waiting for the coming of the Lord. And if the Lord suddenly were to come, the second coming of the Lord from the clouds and, and we don't receive him, that will be it's a little bit absurd. So it was a little bit offensive to me. I, I'm a real person, so I talk to you <laughs> in a real language. I was a little bit offended. Then when they they waited all this long period of time and he shows up and they did not receive him but the bible says they but as many as receive him he gave them power to them gave the power to become sons of god even to them that believe in his name so uh, i begin to wonder why would the pharisees the religious highly religious or spiritual people of that time and season uh, in that day did not receive Jesus Christ what was wrong what well, you know this is the this was their anticipation this was their prayers but when I begin to read certain aspects of the scriptures especially that which has to do with enemies and and problems you know uh, I, I realized that this could have been in a stumbling block to as it, as it was to me because like when I said when I got born again I, I felt that okay now I, I, I'm, I'm excited because all my problems I, I don't like problems I don't like having enemies so all my problems is completely over I was excited but of of a period of time it looks like you know that was not gonna be a reality because problems keep coming and it's not what I anticipated 
And so that, you know, has, you know, inspired me uh, to begin to study because, you know, I, I kind of uh, aligned to the Old Testament way of treating enemies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the mosaic principle I, I was that that was comfortable for me you know so but unfortunately i was not born in the old testament time i happened to be born in the new testament time and i'm supposed to embrace and be a believer follower of jesus christ and practicing his principles but i find myself you know a kind of liking that the way moses you know uh, deal with the enemies is there an eye for an eye and you know so if somebody slap you slap him back <laughs> that seems to that seems to be our natural disposition so i i, I begin to see why the the pharisees and the sadducees and all the groups at that point in time were not able to receive him because jesus teaching you know on some subject was quite you know strange and contrary to our natural like oh yeah a natural disposition especially when it comes to the subject of problems and enemies you know because that's what we face daily i i, I can read from the book of James, I think chapter number one, about verse two, he say, "Rejoice when you have problems." <laughs> so, so I'm supposed to run down to my bishop and say, "Hey, bishop, I'm so excited this morning." Oh, praise the Lord! He said, "What's what's what is, what's going on? I have problems. Rejoice when you fall into different kinds of trials and difficulties." That's what the book of James says. And when you look at you know the the teaching of Jesus. Jesus Christ on treating an enemy. Let me just read one or two scriptures as we move on. Well, the title of my short, you know, sermon to you this morning will be the same title of my book. is already on the chat there. You can check it out, you know, from Goliath to glory. Now, when I read the book of Matthew chapter, let's just go a little bit there. Matthew chapter number five verse 43 to 44 i'm taking on the niv version new international version he says this is jesus directly you have this is Jesus speaking. And now work with me because um, I'm beginning to see why the Pharisees and the Sadducees and all of them religious folks at that time were having difficulty because they were used to an eye for an eye, you know, an ear for your ear, you know, somebody tit for tat, like we used to say. That seems to be our natural disposition. If you insult me, if you slap me, I give you back perhaps double if I can. But when Jesus came, his teaching was quite opposite the, the nature of our nature, our natural disposition. Because he will say something like this in the book of Matthew chapter number 5 verse 43 to 44. You have heard that he was saved. This, this, is, this, is, this is Jesus. Love your neighbor and hate your enemy. That's, that's just the nature. That's who we are. If somebody is against me and I, I, I look at enemy in different uh, languages that are used in the Bible. I look up the word enemy in Greek is ectros, you know, you know, and it has the root meaning of hate and oppose. I look up the word enemy in the Hebrew word Ovie derived from a meaning to be hostile. I look it up in Amramic and see that it's in the same thing. It means it, there is no difference. It means conveying hostility. And now this is what Jesus is saying to these folks here. You have heard it was said that 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 is this is the normal way it used to be. But I'm coming with you in a new a new dimension. Love your name and hate your enemy that's just how we are you know I, I, I this is this is the way I feel you know if you're hurting me if you're opposing me if you're trying to take me out how can I be friends with you man how can I really love you because and give me reasons I should I love you so that you can really really have opportunity to hurt me or take me out you know so so why should i love you but I, jesus said but i tell you love your enemies <laughs> and pray 
but for those who persecute you everyone so love your enemies you know so you you supposed to uh supposed to love your enemies you know so it's find out someone who's trying to steal from you is trying to get you out of the job so that he can take your position and make him for the coffee take him out for shopping <laughs> <laughs> and demonstrate love to this person and show the person that you really love the person and for those who abuse you uh, and and you know who who wrongfully use you who who say some unhealthy things to you uh, and try to hurt you in every way they can and Jesus said you ought to love them and 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 pray for them and the kind of prayer that you pray is not a prayer of hate it's the prayer of saying god i love you know a social person who's trying to steal my job who's trying to get me <laughs> get me out of my you know, husband house who's trying to take my wife who's trying to mess up my life i really love this person i'm praying for this person yes that's what the bible teaches so you can understand why the Pharisees, it didn't go down well. That's why I came to honor, he came to his own. And his own receiving, not, not because, it, but because his teaching was quite contrary to the human natural disposition. The things that they know all along from their forefathers. And that's why the question, Jesus, are you greater than Abraham, our father? You bring some new stuff here. Are you greater than Abraham, our father? That's a question because from that time it was love your neighbor and those who are neighborly to you and for those who hate you, hate them back. That was what it, that's the natural disposition. But Jesus was coming out with a new dimension of relationship. A new dimension that we should be able to see our enemies, our difficulties, our challenges. And I told you from the beginning, I don't like enemies i don't like enemies i don't like problems i'm allergic to it but do they come yes they seem to be coming and i have to find a solution uh, to my enemies to my problems you know because they they they, they won't stop coming to, to me no matter how much i try they won't stop coming so that is what led me to begin to investigate is there any means of how am I supposed to deal with enemies because they're coming. The problems are coming. And, and it doesn't matter if I pray. It looks like the more I pray, the more I want to work in faith, the more I show my love for God, the challenges are coming. And when I find out, this is the solution that the Bible offers. Look at, look, walk with me to the book of Luke chapter number 6. Is NIV. But unto you who are who are listening, I say, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. Oh, oh, love those, love your enemies. Take them out. Take them out for shopping. Go shop for some groceries for them. Take them out for, you know, shopping. Bless them. Do something great for them. Because they are your enemies. Does it sound good to you? Can you understand why the Pharisees were, 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 were resistant? And all the things in the Bible, he to his own. And his own did not receive him. They, they like some things about Jesus. But, you know, when they, like when he said, you have to eat my flesh and drink my blood. And the guy says, you know, we are not carnivores. <laughs> we are not cannibals in any way. And then you're saying we should, we, for us to be a part of your, uh, we need to eat your flesh and drink blood. But, so you, you will understand why this John said he came to his own. And he soon did not receive. I used to wonder why were they anticipating, you know, and praying, waiting for the Messiah. And all of a sudden, the Messiah is here. It's not that, you know, they have asked him a direct question. Are you the Messiah that was? He said, I am he. <laughs> He's so direct. He did not hide. He said, I am the one. So why couldn't they receive, receive him? And mass. They couldn't receive him because of some of these principles and teachings and lifestyle and a way of living that he was coming, which was quite contrary to what these folks as lived 
over the centuries. So he said, if, if for those of you who are listening, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you, those who abuse you, those who are, you know, use you abusingly, you know, in every way, pray for them, love them, uh, demonstrate. So love is an action word. It's not just, you know, we know that if somebody say, you know, I love your love, you have to prove it, you have to show it. So if you say you love enemies, you know, and take them out for a coffee, take them to the sponsor them to the very good restaurant, like you would your friend, hang out with them. That's what the scripture teaches. Love your enemies. So love is an action word. You need to do that. You need to you need to go all the way out to do that. You know, and, and so it, it, you know, I, I, what I came to realize is that it is uh, more costly, <laughs> more costly for me to have enemies. So I changed my mind. <laughs> I changed my mind. I don't, I, 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 I don't see enemies anymore because I realize it's cost. It's gonna cost me a lot. I need to take them out. Perhaps buy them a car if I'm financially boy and buy them a house. You know, do some stuff for my enemies that I'm supposed to be doing for my friend because that's what the scripture says. Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. This guy, that is, the folks that are trying to take you out, those situations, embrace them. Love them. I, I don't know. That's, that's not me. It's the word of God. <laughs> it's the word of God. So see, remember my journey was how to try to find a solution to deal with my enemies because I don't like enemies and problems. I don't like it. So being born again, I, I have to find a way to deal with the enemies, you know. And I was thinking that in my, you know, during my research, I'm going to discover a way that, you know, kind of fit with, with my natural disposition, like in the Old Testament, you know, in, in the time of Moses, which was an eye for an eye, a teeth for a teeth, you know, tooth for the tooth, or whatever. But, you know, if it was payback. If you do good to me, I do good to you. If you mess up with me, I mess up with you. The same time. So I was trying to find out something like that, but I find something that is completely contrary to my nature. And I came to understand why he came to his own. And his own did not receive him because some of these principles were completely contrary to their human nature and to their natural disposition. And it's still the same today. I, you know, I have to, you know, when I come to realize that, you know, having enemies is becoming more expensive because of this scripture. It said, do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. I'm supposed to bless them. And you know that. That is an action. We're not supposed to bless them. Wake up in the morning, you know, perhaps, you know, you know, uh, do something great for them. Take them out for a, a breakfast in an expensive, you know, restaurant. Because that's what the Bible commands me to do. I'm supposed to be, oh Lord, help me this morning. And much more than when I come to church, he said, pray for those who mistreat you. I'm, and this prayer is not a prayer of revenge. It's a prayer of thanksgiving, a prayer of praying for them. I thank you so, so, God, for so, so personal, bless him, and, you, know, you know, just pray for them. That's what the scripture teaches. That's a solution to our enemies. And Romans chapter 12, verse 20. And it says, On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, <laughs> oh Lord help you, feed him. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> see, see, see. I, it, I don't know how that, if my enemy, now, 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 I, if somebody's trying to take you out, somebody who's opposing you, somebody who's trying to get you fired at work, you know, so that he can take your position, you know, uh, somebody who's trying to mess up with your family and with your kids, and he says, I should take him to the restaurant and pay his bills. That's practical. That's what it literally means. If he's thirsty, 
Give him something to drink. I don't know how you're going to interpret that. You can't spiritualize that, can you? Because he's talking about the, if he's hungry, I should do what? Feed that person. Feed my enemy. Give him something to drink. And they say, but you know, I say, in doing this, you will heap a burning cause. But you know, it's costing me a lot of money to maintain enemies. So these scriptures and a lot more of them that you can find in, you know, there are hundreds of them in the Bible. They have, you know, in the New Testament, how we're supposed to treat our enemies. And it is just in line with these few ones that I summarize here. These scriptures challenges us to go beyond our natural reactions and, and embody the love of Christ. And, I, and Jesus leave out to demonstrate that. Because on the cross, you know, on the cross, he said to the Father, forgive them for they know not what they were doing. Guess what? They knew what they were doing. They know they knew what they were doing. But... <laughs> Did they not know what to do, do you? that you hang somebody in the cross and you nail him to the cross and you give him, you know, was that was that a good treatment? But he's what did he say? Forgive them for they know not what they were doing. How do you treat enemies? So these scriptures and more embody, you know, uh, the, the, the love of God, Christ. It shows us. So when I were, you know, remember my journey, keep it at the back of my, my, your mind, that my journey was to find a solution to treat my enemies because I am allergic to enemies and problems. And like James would say, you know, count it all joy when you fall into different temptation and challenges in your life. Just be happy. Rejoice in all things. I say rejoice. Be happy. This is what the scripture teaches. That's the that's what we that's the season and that is the time. We are no longer in the time of Moses. We are in the dispensation, the new covenant. That this is this is supposed to be our lifestyle. So I, I find out that you know uh, it's it's a little bit challenging to have enemies. So from my discovery, I, I don't have enemies anymore because it's a little bit expensive. <laughs> Expensive than I thought <laughs> in the New Testament. Now let's let's move a little bit, you know, to you know, let, let, so that I can let you go this morning. But I'm excited because when I discovered this years back, you know, it changes my disposition about enemies. Let's move a little bit into the story of David and Goliath. Goliath was a formidable enemy. It was a threat. It was a national threat. Now. That's an enemy, a typical enemy. And he challenges the Israelites for 40 days, continually. So what is that situation that is posing as a Goliath in your life, as a believer? It seems formidable, it seems undefeated, like Goliath, a champion, standing. The challenge but you know, it, you know, you know, David happened to see it differently, and, and this is this is the perspective that I'm going. Saul, the whole entire nation of Israel, saw Goliath as a national threat, a, a man, a situation that is coming to take them out. And so, what did they do? The natural reaction, the they, they ran away into cover. And nobody was willing to come and confront Goliath. But David, you know, came into the scene. He did not see Goliath as the rest of the nation. Saw so Goliath. He didn't see Goliath like that. He saw Goliath differently. And so my prayer this morning is that God will open your eyes because, you know, he said we should love our enemies, we should pray for those, and we should uh, kind of embrace our challenges. And, and the Bible does says that, you know, uh, God in his infinite mercy 
will not allow us to be tempted be or challenged beyond our capacity. So I came to talk to somebody this morning that whatever you face out of God's, you know, uh, you know, uh, love and, and, and disposition, he allows that situation to come into your life. You are well able. You are, he, God will not allow us, that's a scripture there, he will not allow us to be tempted, tested beyond our capacity and capability. And so when Goliath came into the scene, Goliath was equal, I mean Israel was equal to the task. But they did not see Goliath the way David saw Goliath. Uh, and and, and so let, let me add this perspective to you. Now I want you to think of David a little bit. That, you know, David was not one of those, you know, uh, prominent sons in the family. Mm. Uh, because when Samuel came to ordain the king, uh, he asked Jesse, you know, to bring out the sons. So Jesse, like every one of us, you know, uh, we saw potential. <laughs> and so the Bible says he brought out the sons that had the potential and looked like they can be kings to the nation of Israel. But the oil refused to drop until even Samuel himself was persuaded. Go read the story. When this one comes, he said, ah, this is the one, take the oil to, and the oil did not drop until all the sons of Jesse passed through. And he has to ask, is this all what, you know, is, are these all the sons that you have? And Jesse said, well, <laughs> There is one that is left there. He, he's not a graduate. Didn't go to school. Uh, it's, it's, I don't think he's the one. But you know, so we, he is good at keeping sheep. You know, doing those many tasks. Uh, La caution that there is a revelation here that you know God will what you have been going through that looks like you are in the backside of the desert. The glory of a situation is coming. To announce your rival and not your demise. And so when they brought David, the oil dropped. And guess what? That was the beginning point. And so sometimes you are very good, you are talented in what you're doing, and you do not have any recognition, no appreciation. And nobody seemed to recognize and appreciate it until Goliath comes in. So the first point here is that Goliath announces your arrival, not your demise. Goliath was not David's destruction, but an opportunity for elevation. When you encounter Goliath, you are stepping into a new chapter. David needed Goliath to transist from being a shepherd boy to a national hero. And, and and that's why you should I begin I, 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 that's I begin to understand why you should say rejoice when you fall into diverse temptation when glorious situations confronts you. If you are a believer, you are walking in faith. You love the Lord. You 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 are walking. You are doing all what you know you can. To, to be a true believer and all of a sudden a Goliath of a situation shows up. He said rejoice because that Goliath of a situation is, is, is to announce that you have arrived. You have been in the back desert and you have faced the lions and the bears and you have killed them but you have no recognition. And you have been through things that seems not to be rewarding at all. But when Goliath comes in, he's going to trust you into your destiny. That's what Goliath does. That was the platform for David's promotion. Number two, Goliath trust you into your destiny. Without Goliath, David will remain in obscurity. And some of you have been in obscurity for too long. You're doing it. And, and, and you sometimes almost wonder why God sees what you're doing. But when God wants to promote you and to launch you into your destiny, guess what? He allows the Goliath to come. 
and, and, and our reaction towards Goliath matters. Uh, are you going to react like the Israelites and King Saul? And, you know, duck and dive and cover yourself and, and begin to, you know, you know, and, and begin to feel frustrated, or you are going to see a divine opportunity to begin to rejoice, to begin to know that okay, the presence of glory signals God's intention to showcase power in your life. God wants to show His power. God wants to reveal His glory. You can imagine. Job, you can imagine, you think of Job for a moment. He did not know what was going on behind the scenes. But God was proud of Job. He wanted to. And what happened? Calamity upon calamity. Trouble upon trouble. Until he got so sick unto death that the wife would say, cause God to die. But Job, Job understood this, what I'm telling you. He said, I know, I know, I know, I know, my, that's what we, I know my redeemer living. And Paul would write in the center, I know there is a level of knowing that challenges and problems of life cannot take you out because you serve the living God. That the Goliath kind of situation that you're facing is not to kill you, not to destroy you. It's rather a stepping stone to your destiny. He said, I, I know my Redeemer lived. Paul echoed in the center, I know, for I know all things. He can't Everything will work out. If you stand still, if you recognize that Goliath is there to trust you into your destiny, to launch you into your destiny. Point number three, Goliath puts your talent on full display. It was Goliath that differentiated David from other shepherd boy. You have been a shepherd boy for too long. And now God has heard your prayer. And God has answered your prayer. And guess what happens when he answers your prayers? Goliath shows up. Goliath differentiated David from other shepherd boys. Similarly, the challenges we face highlight our unique gifts and God's anointing upon us. David's victory over Goliath was a public demonstration of his faith and God-given ability. You know, they, they try, they, they try to get him to use something else. He said, "Kings, I have not tested this one. I know that things that I've tested, there's things that are proven. I will go with what I'm." So all of that that have been going on in the back scene of your life. And now, when you thought that, oh, it's, uh, whew, I, I'm almost, yeah, I, then Gloria shows up. It's not to destroy. It is to bring you to limelight. Gloria puts your talent will put your talent on full display. It was Gloria that differentiated David from other shepherd boys. And similarly, the, the challenges we face highlight our unique gifts and color. So, so what, what you're going through may not be similar. It, it has to be different because you're not like any other person. Don't feel jealous that people are not going through what you don't go through. Don't quit the church. Because what you're going through, you know, is everybody, nobody understands. Number four point. Goliath separates you for a higher purpose. The confrontation with Goliath set David apart, preparing him for future leadership. Likewise, our enemies and trials refine us and prepare us for the road. God has designed for us. Your unique ministry, your unique calling, the things that God has preordained, you know, you to do before he created you, sets you on a unique course of difficulty and trials so that you can be refined, reprocessed, and prepared for the revelation of his glory. And that was it with David. So the, the back desert life, the wrestling with the lion and the bears, that nobody 
Nobody's nobody scores. There was no clapping of hands. There was no, uh, there's no support. There was no morale or, you know, physical support. There was no fans. There was no appreciation. It was just him wrestling. He said, oh, the, the, he had it by himself. So sometimes the lonely road that you walk in difficulties is just preparing you because you are unique. You're different. It's just preparing you for a higher purpose. Number five point. Goliath, an instrument of God's plan. Instead of seeing Goliath as a threat, David viewed him as a step in God's plan. In every major move of God in our lives, there will be challenges. They are not meant to destroy you, but to introduce you to a greater purpose. My life is testimony. If you, if you want to get more of that, you can read the book. My life is a living testimony to where I am today. 2014, I was literally certified dead for 12 hours in Johannesburg, South Africa. And God gave me a second chance. They could not take me out. It was a an enemy like Goliath. And guess what? After that, there was a new season. Embrace your Goliath. When we face Goliath, we are on the brink of our kingdom. You know, just as David embraced his challenge and triumph, we too must face our enemies with faith and love. And that's why you cannot have hope. I don't have room for unforgiveness. I don't have any storage for pains of the past, offenses. And so this morning, for us to be able to walk this path, we need to come clean. If we are going to embrace, you know, glory and enter into our kingdom, enter into the glory, the divine destiny that God has prepared for us. That all, instead of, you know, having, storing offenses and getting angry and bitter with people and situations, embrace it. That's, that's the solution. And that's why I said to you, you know, uh, uh, it, it was my research to help myself. Because I am an, I, I was allergic to problems and enemies. I would have preferred to use the Old Testament method, but I happened to be born in the New Testament era. And I'm the follower of Jesus. These principles has to work for me. I have to find a way of what it means. And so this morning, before I let you go, I love for you to reflect on your hearts. Are we holding to unforgiveness, vengeance, grudges? Jesus calls us to forgive and love. Turning our hearts towards God's higher purpose. In Matthew chapter 6 verse 14 to 15. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, their sins, your father will not forgive you and will not even hear you. Unforgiveness deafens God from your prayers. And that's not a situation you want to be. So I now understand why I should love my enemies. I now understand why I should rejoice when those trial comes. And I am now free of enemies. I'm now free of offenses. Because I see them differently. If God loves me so much and allow me to go through this, he has a purpose, is to reveal the glory that he has already planned for us. I love for you to buy your heads this morning. Offenses will come, difficulties will come, enemies will appear, glorious situations will confront us. But what are you going to do with it? Are you going to be like the Pharisees? He came to his own and his own did not receive him. Because they were offended at his principle. And this morning I love for you to bow your heads. You cannot leave this prayer room with any offense in your heart, with any kind of unforgiveness. 
and I love for you to, as the lines are open, I love for you to just open your mouth and talk to the Lord and ask Him and forgive, really forgive. You don't need that apology from anybody. Forgive, let go, embrace, go out from today. Show your enemy love. Let's practice this principle. It worked for me. It will work for you. And guess what? No more enemies. No more offenses. By your hands in prayer.